Hello Infochino lovers, it's Andrew Charles here. I'm the Commercial Director for CompNow and today I'm joined by Pete Chambers. Pete, welcome to, Mate, great Comp, to be here. CompNow for a, a little fireside chat. Yeah. Pete's the uh, APAC Managing Director for AMD. Um, what a journey, Pete. You it know? has been. It's been 13 years at AMD. 13 years yeah. and, and, and you know the last, I guess, 10 years in the market, AMD has just gone absolutely ballistic is the only word. Up and to the right. Up and to the right. The, the, Just what you want to send all the charts. Yeah, the, 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 <laughs> that garden of magic quadrant is, 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 is rocketing along. Um, yep. Pete, what strategic decisions do you believe have driven AMD's success over the past decade, particularly in the Australian marketplace? I think a lot of the things that have driven our success is common to both ANZ and, frankly, the, the global organisation. I think people, uh, having the right people. I mean, we're very heavy on engineers. We need very smart people to design great products. Yeah. And so investing in our engineering organisation and ensuring we're delivering the very best product uh, has been really key, and that's been key to our success. Uh, yeah. Ryzen and Epic, when they came on in 2017, really changed the market dynamic. Okay. And there were some features that uh, we brought to market with those products that sort of set us apart from the general direction of the market. So things like chiplets. Um, up until that point, everyone was very focused on large monolithic type uh, silicon, uh, and we brought the chiplet technology to market, and that set us apart, was that allowed us to scale. Yeah, right. So make a great x86 CPU, and then scale it out, uh, and you see it's go from a you know an eight core solution on a notebook, all the way up to 64, 128 cores on a server. Yeah, wow. So that really you know set us apart. I think uh, coupling that with um, our passion for technology, we're all, we're all technologists, we love talking about tech. Uh, and then what we do f with our partners. And I think we've come a very long way in the last, uh, especially probably not in the last 10 years, but in the last five years, I would say, in how we engage with the channel, how we deal with our partners, uh, our programs, our investments. A lot of that has changed significantly, I would say, uh, in the last you know, two to three years especially. So I think they're all the things that we've done to really drive the business forward yeah. and engage with our channel, our partners, and take feedback from our customers. Yeah, and if we, if we re rewind the clock a little bit, you know, you go back sort of, uh, I don't know, seven or eight years, um, you look at the OEM landscape, you know, the mm. Lenovo's, the HP's, the, the, the Dell's of the world. Um, you know, there was pretty much only one, you know, chip manufacturer getting coverage in, in that landscape. Mm. How has AMD broken into that OEM environment? You know, what, what have you seen out there that, that, is, that has allowed AMD to really not only break in, but now dominate some of these large OEMs and, and the products they're bringing to market? Yeah, I think, you know, some of the things I've just spoken about, uh, technology is key. Uh, and what we're bringing to market is differentiated. Yeah. Uh, and the OEMs, frankly, uh, have voted with their investment dollars in platforms. Yeah. And so I think it's a great reflection on what we've been able to do as a company okay. uh, in the fact that the OEMs have. We've gone from you know, a handful of design wins to hundreds of design wins. Uh, and that's not something that <coughs> comes for free. Yeah. It's something that the OEMs invest in. We invest with them. But the fact that they're seeing confidence in the technology is a reflection on the number of platforms that we have. I think we've done a lot of work around TCO, and it look, when we look at server especially, mm. um, we have very uh, core dense solutions, energy efficient solutions, uh, and that's what customers are looking for today. Yeah. And so the OEMs go, well, this is what our customers want. We've got to make sure we've got AMD solutions out there in the marketplace to address the needs of our customers. Yeah, look, while we're on the topic of, of servers and data centers, I'm, yes. I'm going to quickly raise the topic of uh, AMD's acquisition of uh, Penn Sando uh, and um, you know, the, 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 the close relationship that, that um, AMD will now have with HPE, in particular with its, um, its CX10,000 technology. Uh, obviously, there's been a lot of hype in the marketplace. Uh, a lot of you out there are, are feeling a little bit of pain from mm. um, VMware at the moment. Um, but uh, the, the, beauty, the beauty is that uh, AMD, um, you know, with this acquisition of Penn Sando, has a beautiful top of rack solution um, that really allows you to uh, save a huge amount of licensing cost with the new structures that VMware's mm. brought to the market. Are you expecting uh, you know, some really good numbers coming through from that type of technology over the next couple of years, Pete? Yeah, I would think so. The HP Aruba CX10000 can be used by organisations to reduce risk associated with lateral threats and gain compliance like PCI, HIPAA, APRA and others. The HP Aruba CX10000 is the only technology implementation of the AMD Pensando DPU technology for enterprise. This is this is super exciting, yeah. Pete. So so CompNow is is very very close to, to HPE. Uh, I had a had a, a meeting this morning, um, yeah, with one of their enterprise BDMs, a gentleman called Jason Pradun, great operator. Uh, I did mention I was chatting to you today ar ar around this, and and you know if you are interested in this type of technology, please reach out to your local CompNow. 
uh, BDM because we, we can arrange a session, um, you know, take you out to the HPE uh, demonstration uh, centre and, and, and run you through that top of rack environment and, and actually uh, present you with a live demonstration. And, and at the very core of that, as, as Pete mentioned, um, our AMD ASIC DPU chips. Yeah, and absolutely. I and mean, we're here to help as well. Yeah. Um, we have a sales team here in Australia. We also have FAE support, technical support available in Australia. So, look, hey, we'd love to work with you and uh, help your customers. Which is awesome. So, so it, you know, you, you obviously, Pete, um, you're first now with DPU at top of rack. Yep. But if you go way back, you were first with GPU on the Ryzen, you know, and even earlier GPU on, on, on your on your. We were first with Ryzen. APUs, yeah, that's yeah. right in the marketplace. And that continues to develop, right? And so we've just launched our next generation of our uh, Ryzen AI APUs for yeah. notebook products and actually for desktop as well. Uh, and we're bringing an AI-enabled product uh, to the masses, as it were, right? So we, we launched our first product back in... Uh, the first half of 2023. Yeah, wow. Uh, and so we just launched our second generation of product. Uh, and it's great. So we take basically the CPU technology that's already there, the GPU, and then we pair in an MPU, which is your neural processing unit, uh, which is that AI engine, and basically create Ryzen AI, which is all those three um, areas working together seamlessly to give a great customer experience. And, and I guess that probably leads me to yeah, my next Question, Pat. I'm reading off my notes now, but <laughs> but uh, obviously, you know, like you mentioned, AMD's made some of those significant significant strides in microprocessor design mm. over the past decade. Um, are you able to highlight a couple of those sort of key archi key architectural innovations? You've mentioned a couple, but things like you know Zen Core. You mentioned the chiplet before. Yep. Um, 3D stacking, 3D caching. Yep. Um, do you want to comment on a, on a few of I those? I've taken all my answers there, but certainly, you know, when we, when we introduced Zencore back in 2017, that was a real inflection point for us with yeah. both Ryzen and Epic. And the one thing I will say is that the thing that we've done, and I think we've executed very well, is that consistency in bringing a new generation to market when we say we're going to do it yeah. and in a timely fashion. I think that's built a lot of confidence uh, with our partners, certainly around server. Um, we know we were out of the business a little bit for, for a number of years there with server and so building that trust and confidence has been really, really key. Uh, and you've seen us now consistently execute, especially around Epic. Uh, and you know, we've got a, a great roadmap of more product that's coming around both Ryzen and also around Epic. And then if you complement that with things like um, our 3D stacking technology, uh, which helps us from a gaming standpoint when you think about what our desktop customers are doing, but also in the data centre where we can stack that cache on our Epic products uh, and for certain workloads, that for, for HPC customers and fluid computational fluid dynamic customers, they see a massive improvement in performance. So, yeah, it's been a, a great evolution of the AMD product line over the last few years. And I think it's really interesting, Pete. You mentioned to me when we caught up a few weeks ago that... Um, AMD had started building processors with NPU in a few years ago. Yes. Right? And, and we're bringing them to market. Yeah, before this huge buzz around yeah. AI actually hit the market. The reality is, you know, in, in the mass OEM market In the x86 space. In the x86 space, you guys really had NPU before anybody. Yeah, as I said, we had, we had product in market in the first half of last year. Uh, and we, we just announced uh, our commercial products, the second generation of our commercial products uh, with an NPU. And we've got more product coming out in the second half of the year as well. So we will not slow down on our innovation around MPU. We do see the demand in the marketplace. Uh, of course, you've got to have the technology there for the, 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 the software ecosystem to, to make software for. Mm -hmm. So if we think back into the first half of last year when we launched our first um, AI-enabled product, uh, there was only three features in Microsoft that used it. Wow. Um, today, fast forward to today, uh, we've got over 100 different features in different software applications from right. Adobe, um, from Zoom, from OBS, uh, from Topaz Labs. So there's over 100 different applications that are accelerated in those key uh, software developers. Uh, that said, we're now working with over 150 different developers with their SDK to implement accelerated uh, workloads in, in many, many different uh, software applications. So we've gone from three to over 100 uh, in less than 12 months, and I would suggest that that will continue to accelerate as we go forward and people, you know, build in that functionality into their software because it, it is more energy efficient and it does operate you know, faster and give customers a, a great user experience. And if you're like a, a power user like Tommy who's filming us today, <laughs> um, you know, obviously you're yeah, moving into something like a Threadripper, um, you know, to, to maximise and enhance your, your, your Adobe experience yep. um, is, is absolutely critical in, in today's yep. market. You know? Absolutely. So you're going to have great performance from the Threadripper uh, up to 96 cores on your desktop. So we know our customers in media and entertainment 96 cores. love that product. That's um, insane. It, it brings great workflow efficiencies. 
Uh, but more importantly, as you pair that with a, with a GPU, with an AMD GPU, mm. um, you're also going to get that AI res, uh, acceleration as well on certain workloads. So, and obviously the GPU does a great job accelerating workloads as well. So yeah. it's, it's really an ecosystem that's delivering a great customer experience. Amazing. And, and Pete, what, what do you think? I mean, you're talking about 96 cores on, on a chip, right? Which is yeah. just insane. Yep. What is the future? Are you able to talk about anything that you are well, potentially look, we're, we're seeing down at, the... Look, we're already right. at 128 cores in server yep. uh, per socket. So if you think of a dual socket uh, solution, that's substantial. Uh, but again, you know, I, I can't talk about the future product that hasn't been announced yet, but clearly, you know, high core counts, high density. It's what our customers are asking for. That's why we've created the products we have today. Yeah. Um, and so if you think about the data center, um, space is at a premium. Um, there's limited, you know, power in many situations in existing data centers. So being able to deliver you know, more performance per socket, per box, but doing it in a very energy efficient way is absolutely key. It's what our customers are asking for and certainly what we're focused on delivering. Yeah, and I think there's, you know, just talking to a lot of you out there, many of you have not really explored AMD, you know, for the last few years and, and, and really, you know, I think the share price says it all, Pete. You know, I, I was. <laughs> Did you buy some shares a few years ago? I, I, I actually jumped on, and you know, I'm not going to you know, blow my own trumpet here, but I jumped on. I don't know, six or seven years ago, when I think about twenty five bucks. You know, and I, I, I wish I'd bet my house on it, but I didn't. Um, but all I can say is, you know, the share price is is is, is really showing the marketplace what yeah. the capability of the organisation is, um, and I think as a customer out there. Um, you know, you, you really need to, 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 to stop and take a moment and, and you know, contact Comp now and have a chat with us around the AMD portfolio and, Absolutely. and, and, and how we can really enhance your business by, by moving to this type of processing technology. Yeah, and what I would say, and our CEO, Lisa Su, says it, um, let the silicon do the talking. And what we mean by that is that we can show you many benchmarks, I can show you um, lots of industry charts and all sorts of wonderful, pretty pictures. But ultimately, it's about your user experience, the customer's user experience in their environment. So now to your point, we'd love to work with CompNow uh, to make sure that your customers have you know, demo seed units. They can test the laptop, test the server in their environment. And we're confident that their experience is going to be absolutely sensational. No, I love it, Pete. And, and you know, without a shadow of a doubt, you know, AMD is such a great organisation to work with. I feel like we're very culturally aligned. You, you yeah. seem to have a very free-flowing culture. I think since Lisa Sue came on at the top level, you know, it's really, really transformed the business. And and and, and you've seen hyper-accelerated growth, you know, particularly over the last seven or eight, eight yeah, years. Yeah, she's led an amazing organisation and she's a true visionary. And yeah. a lot of our success is, you know, directly... You know, attributed to her vision and driving the business. Because it, it, a lot of the things that, that she drove was, you know, deliver the best x86 core. Don't try and do all these other things. And so if you look at our technology today, it's the same x86 core in our notebook, in our desktop, in our server, and it's in our embedded products. It's completely scalable. So but you make the very best, very best core and then you scale it out. And I think yeah. that was something that we hadn't done in the past and we're certainly doing now. And it's one of our secrets of our success. Nice, Pete. Now, last question for you. Corporate yes. sustainability and responsibility. Absolutely. Right. What's AMD doing in the marketplace around those two really important factors that everyone is talking about at the moment? Well, the first thing I would say is that when we're designing a product, when we've got a clean sheet of paper, uh, we have sustainability, energy efficiency in mind from the start. Uh, this is not an afterthought for us. This is absolutely about how do we design the most energy efficient product from the get-go. So I'll start open with that. So from a supply chain standpoint, we're very focused on reducing our greenhouse gas emissions by 50% by 2030. As of mid-2023, we've already improved our energy efficiency by 13 and a half times since 2020, which is on track for our goal to improve our energy efficiency by 30x by 2025. That's amazing. It is, yeah. yeah and and again, crazy. it's part of our focus in, in our DNA of what yeah. we want to try and achieve. Um, from an energy efficient standpoint, we're very, very focused on what we do, as I said, from a development standpoint, to make our processes the most energy efficient in the market. Yeah. Uh, and that translates into great CCO for our end customers. And really just, you know, on Epic, Pete, there's, there's, there's nothing else like it in the market at the moment. It is literally like, you know, years ahead of the That's nearest what our competitor. Telling us, it, right? Yeah, it's, it's mind blowing, you know? Um, so yeah, please reach out to Comp now and, and let's have a chat about Absolutely. that next refresh, you know? Um, yeah. Yeah. And if you're looking at other data points, if you think about the top eight of the top 10 greenest supercomputers in the world in November 23, we're all on AMD. Wow. So I think that's a great reflection on the market is adopting our technology and see the value in what we're bringing to market. Uh, and then if you think about some of the work we do, when you, you, you know, we talk about technology, yeah. um, technology can actually bring change. And yeah. we've done some work with a startup called Accelerate Wind 
using the, our EPIC technology to then model uh, new wind turbines that improve performance by 15%, wow. 15 times. And so it's not just about bringing great technology, but how can that be applied to bring you know, benefits to humanity yeah. um, and you know, just make the world a better place? That's incredible. But you know, all, all, in all, all in all, I mean, what a, what a journey. Um, yes. Pete, look, it's been an absolute pleasure to have you in for a fireside chat today. Thank you. Um, and you know, from a, a CompNow perspective, you know, obviously, as you guys know, CompNow provides IT custom built for your needs. If you'd like to know more about what we spoke about today, please get in touch with your CompNow account manager or email us at info at compnow.com.au. Guys, I'm Andrew Charles. Have a great day. Thank you.